ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله تعالى فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما after thanking and praising Allah for which he is most entitled of our praise and our gratitude we ask Allah for forgiveness and we ask Allah for guidance we ask Allah to keep us steadfast upon his guidance and we ask Allah to shower our beloved messenger with compliments and salutations along with his family and his companions and all of those who follow his tradition until the end of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an commands us and reminds us over and over because one of our weaknesses as human beings is that we forget. One of our weaknesses as human beings is we get distracted. One of our weaknesses as human beings is we lose focus. And Allah created us and He knows us better than we know ourselves. So Allah repeated over and over again, have taqwa of Allah, be conscious, be aware. Be reminded, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of your thoughts and your statements and your actions. There is not a single thing in the heavens or the earth that goes without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing and decreeing exactly its movement. The poet said the darkest ant on the darkest rock in the darkest of nights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware of every single one of its steps. So let us remember that we are in the month where we're supposed to be renewing and increasing our taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Making sure that we do what Allah commanded us to do and we stay away from what He prohibited. My teacher used to always repeat, we face the problems that we face in our life because awamir mu'attala wa nawahi muntahaka. Allah commanded us to do things we haven't done. And Allah commanded us to stay away from things we've done them. That is taqwa, that is piety. To abstain from what Allah prohibited and to fulfill what He commanded. How beautiful is this gathering of ours today? I just can't help but emphasize and mention it. That we are gathered in the greatest act of worship of the week. On the greatest day of the week. In the greatest possible place, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the best month of the year, the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala selected and chose the month and the days of this month to reveal His words, the greatest and most pure and perfect of words, the Qur'an. We thank and praise Allah for having the opportunity to be here and to witness such days and nights and such occasions. How great of a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us that we can actually be here and witness these moments. And the Prophet sallallahu understood the gravity of these moments. He fully understood the value of the moments that we are living in right now. And that is why in the famous hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, as reported to us by the trustworthy and honorable companion Abu Hurairah, Allah be pleased with him and with all of the companions of the Messenger. He said that the Messenger ﷺ, as he stood up to the pulpit to deliver the sermon, and just like we have a few steps, before the Imam rises, the Prophet had a couple of steps before he rose up to address his community. But the Prophet ﷺ did something that seemed strange to them. And they didn't understand why. It wasn't his usual habit. He took a step upwards and then he paused and he out loud said, Ameen. Then he took another step, then paused, then he said, Ameen. Then he took a third step, then he paused, and again he said out loud, Ameen. What does this word Ameen actually mean? We say it at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha, for example, that's when most of us hear it. We say it whenever we're making dua or someone is making dua, we say it at the end of their dua, the end of their prayer and supplication. It means Allahumma stajib. Oh Allah, answer this prayer. 
So when the Prophet ﷺ finished, naturally the Sahaba were inquisitive because they loved to learn every minute detail of the Prophet ﷺ. You know why? Because they loved him. They wanted to learn every minute detail of his life and his actions and his statements because they loved him and because they trusted him and because they wanted to be like him. So when we profess our love for the Messenger of Allah, let us make sure that our attitude and our habits are appropriate with that statement. So they asked the Prophet ﷺ, we heard you say this, Ameen, but what are you saying Ameen to? What dua are you saying Ameen for? And the Prophet ﷺ said that Jibreel came to me. He said that the angel Jibreel alayhi salam came to me. Inna Jibreel atani faqal man adraka shahra Ramadan wa lam yughfar lah fadakhala an-nar fa'ab'adahu Allah. Qul ameen. Faqultu ameen. May Allah protect us from the punishment of the hellfire. The Prophet said Jibreel came to me and said that person that is alive in these moments of ours. That person that is witnessing the moments, the days of Ramadan. They're here, they're alive. We're not talking about those that have died already, they are in their graves. Allah shower them with His mercy and forgiveness. We're talking about you and me who are alive. Our hearts are pumping, our lungs are breathing, we're here in Ramadan. The Prophet said, Jibreel told me, those people, you and I, who witness Ramadan, Ramadan comes and passes because it's a period of time, time doesn't stop for anyone, it continues going. So Ramadan came and passed, and they were not amongst those that were forgiven during this time of Ramadan. So may Allah push them far away. Say Ameen, O Muhammad. The Messenger said Ameen. The one who has the opportunity to be forgiven during the month of Ramadan, but yet for some reason, due to their negligence, due to their shortcomings, due to their lack of taking these days seriously and valuing them, they were not amongst those that were forgiven. So may Allah push them far away. And the Messenger said, Ameen to that dua. The Messenger وسلم, said, Ameen to that dua. May Allah make us of those who witness Ramadan and are forgiven in this month of Ramadan. The hadith continues and the Prophet mentioned two other scenarios in the same manner. The second scenario is the one who is alive while their parents are also alive, but they are not dutiful towards their parents. They are not kind and good and obedient towards their parents. So therefore they are not forgiven. So they will enter the hellfire. May Allah push them away. Say, Ameen, O Muhammad. He said, Ameen, alayhi salatu wasalam. The third scenario, the one whose name of Muhammad is mentioned in front of him or her, and they don't take the opportunity to say compliments and salutations of Allah upon the source of mercy for all mankind, and they're not forgiven for making that compliment and salutation, they end up being a of the people of hellfire, may Allah push them away. Say Ameen, O Muhammad. The Prophet said Ameen. Opportunities for the slate to be cleaned and those opportunities are not taken advantage of. Last week in the khutbah we spoke about money and we spoke about debt. For someone who's not in debt or has never been in debt, perhaps it's hard for you to imagine. Everyone else who's experienced it might be able to relate. Imagine someone is drowning in debt. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. And there is no possible way out. The numbers, once they crunch the numbers, it seems they will die with this debt. Imagine the burden that that person feels. Anyone who's been in debt and has been bothered about it, if you're not bothered about it, then we need to review last week's khutbah. But if you've been bothered about it, it's something that pains you when you go to bed at night and it pains you when you wake up in the morning. It is a heavy load that you are dragging with you with every step you take. And imagine someone comes and says, your entire debt is covered. It's gone. Can you imagine the relief that such a person would feel? Can you imagine how light they would feel on their feet? Can you imagine how much more they would appreciate whatever wealth they had, no matter how small it was? 
It's time we adjust our attitude and our mindset to feel that way about our poor choices. To feel that our mistakes and our poor choices that we make in a time of negligence, in a time of laziness, in a time of succumbing to our desires is an actual weight that we carry on our shoulders and drag with our ankles. And Ramadan is one of those opportunities for that to be cleared and removed so you can be light again. So you can bounce and take a step and feel like gravity is doing less work on you. It's the maghfirah of the month of Ramadan, the maghfirah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is often posed, I've made a mistake, I've done something wrong, what do I do about it? It may seem very simple, but you'd be surprised how much the question is asked and repeated. And I cannot find of a more beautiful example to express how to cleanse ourselves of our poor choices than the story of our beautiful messenger Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. In Surah Al-Qasas, and by the way, this story takes place before Musa became a prophet. When he was Musa ibn Imran, a community member of Bani Israel, uh, living in the uh, uh, place known today as Egypt. So Musa, when he reached maturity and strength, and he finally took a step outside of the compound of Fir'aun where he grew up, and wanted to interact with people and see the world around him, he stepped out in Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 28, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَدَخَلَ الْمَدِينَةَ عَلَى حِينِ غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ أَهْلِهَا فَوَجَدَ فِيهَا رَجُلَيْنِ يَقْتَتِلَانِ هَذَا مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ وَهَذَا مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَاسْتَغَاثَهُ الَّذِي مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ عَلَى الَّذِي مِنْ عَدُوِّهِ فَوَكَزَهُ مُوسَى فَقَضَى عَلَيْهِ Allah says that Musa went into the city center at a time when most people were not out and about. It was relatively empty and quiet. And Musa stumbled upon two men that were fiercely fighting. One of them happened to be from his people, Bani Israel, who were a people that were oppressed and subjugated and persecuted and abused. And the other person was from the aristocrats, from the people of Fir'aun. Those people that claimed to have more right over that land. And they were fighting fiercely. So the man from Bani Israel recognizes Musa. That's Musa. That's my brother from Bani Israel. He will come and support me. So he cried out to him. Istaghathahu. He cried out to him. Save me. I'm going to be destroyed. This guy is going to kill me. Save me. So Musa immediately stepped in, intervened, and struck that man with a closed hand. Wakaz. Darbatun bi al yad struck him with a closed hand and mysteriously, remarkably, shockingly, that man died upon impact. Very strange. Nobody usually dies from one strike of that nature. But the man died. Musa was very strong. He didn't even fully realize the own power of his strike. Musa himself was the first to be shocked and taken aback. قَالَ هَذَا مِنْ عَمَلِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ عَدُوٌ مُضِلٌ مُبِينٌ Musa said, definitely shaitan is involved in this matter. He has taken advantage, he has gotten the better of me, and shaitan is one that leads astray. He's a clear enemy. Immediately, what did Musa do? Immediately he said, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي فَغَفَرَ لَهُ Immediately Musa cried out to his Lord, Rabbi, O oh my Lord, my master, my creator, my sustainer, my nourisher. All of that is in this beautiful word, these two letters of Rabb. Ya Rabb. When is the last time that when we felt ashamed because of the mistake that we did, we felt close enough to our Rabb to call out to him, Ya Rabb. I have wronged myself. Zalamtu nafsi. Musa affirms his mistake. I've wronged myself. So forgive me, O oh Allah. Allah affirms and proclaims without a shadow of doubt, فَغَفَرَ له. Allah forgave him. فَغَفَرَ له. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And of course Allah would do such. Allah is the most forgiving, the ever most merciful. Musa continues and he says, قَالَ رَبِّي Again he calls out to his Lord and Master. قَالَ رَبِّي بِمَا أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيَّ فَلَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ My Lord and Master, you have blessed me with so many blessings, so many gifts, 
so much that you have given me. Because of my gratitude for all of this that you have bestowed upon me, O Allah, I will never be an assistant to criminals or their criminal activity. لَنْ أَكُونَ ظَهِيرًا لِلْمُجْرِمِينَ I will never take part in criminal activity. I will never be a part of them. I will never help or support them. These were the words of the beloved Prophet and Messenger Musa after falling into a grave mistake. He acted in haste. He was well-intentioned. He wanted to reconcile between two people fighting. He wanted to save his fellow brethren from Bani Israel from being destroyed. Well-intentioned. The ulama say with certainty, Musa never meant for that man to die. It was accidental. It was not murder. There was no intention of killing. Some people ignorantly, they say, oh, remember the story when Musa murdered that man? That is a wrong statement. Murder implies malice. It implies the intention to cause harm of that nature. This was completely accidental. But it was a problem. And it was not right. And Musa was the first to admit it. And he immediately asked Allah for forgiveness. And Allah forgave him. And he made a commitment for change. أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم repent to Allah for He is the most forgiving most merciful الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده اللهم صل وسلم وانعم وأكرم وزيد وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا قال الله تبارك وتعالى ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن يتقوا الله After thanking and praising Allah we beseech him to shower our beloved messenger with compliments and salutations and remember that Allah in the Quran said the command to the nations before you and you O Ummah of the Quran O Ummah of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is to have taqwa of Allah is to be conscious and aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. We're reflecting over the experience of Musa when a man accidentally died at his hands. And Musa's response gives us the three pillars of repentance, of forgiveness. Sometimes when we make a mistake, especially if it's a very big one, we're overcome with feelings of guilt. Perhaps that might even go beyond that which is not healthy and it becomes shame. See, guilt in small doses is good because it pushes us to want to change. It's a feeling of discomfort. But when a person reaches the level of shame, then they feel that they themselves are bad or impure or messed up. And that's not productive, that's not efficient. Oftentimes a person can feel so burdened, they feel stuck. There's no way I can compensate or I can recover from my wrong. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this perfect deen of ours that He has blessed us with has given us a way out from even the darkest moments after the worst of mistakes that we could possibly commit. And so through this story of Musa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the three pillars of repentance, of growth, of development, and of positive change which we should implement now in Ramadan. Because the doors of Allah's forgiveness are always open. They're especially open in Ramadan. The first is to admit wrong. There cannot be any forgiveness when there is denial. There cannot be growth. There cannot be development when there is denial. No apology is accepted when it is just thrown out as a token word, but the person does not admit that they did something wrong. We have to affirm that we make mistakes and we made a mistake. And there is nothing shameful about that because the greatest humans to walk the face of the earth admitted that they made mistakes. قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي Our mother and father Adam and Hawa who we all descended from were the first of creation of human beings and they were the first to admit قَالَ رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا فَاغْفِرْ لَنَا فَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, we've wronged ourselves. If you don't forgive us and have mercy upon us, we'll be of the losers. So do we expect we won't be in the same situation too? 
Of course we will find ourselves in a position where we must cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number one, our messenger Musa teaches us, admit the mistake. Admit it. Admit the mistake. And number two, Musa begs Allah for forgiveness. Ask for forgiveness. Ask Allah for forgiveness and ask those who you've wronged or you've hurt for forgiveness. And number three, Musa teaches us to make a commitment for change. And depending on what the mistake we have made is, it may be necessary, and please pay attention to this point as we come to a close. This is very crucial. This is something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. Many times someone may do something wrong and then they, they recognize it's wrong. They ask Allah for forgiveness. They may make dua the whole night and shed buckets of tears. But they don't take any steps. They don't take any concrete steps to make up that mistake or to make sure they don't fall into it again. That's problematic. That's, there's some deficiency there. So if the mistake, for example, is an addiction, well, we know, subhanAllah, last night we had a riveting conversation with a therapist who was telling us about the, the growing, the astronomical figures and cases of addictions. Internet addictions, pornography addictions, all kinds of ailments that people are struggling with. And we know that if a person does not seek the appropriate therapy, it is almost impossible for them to overcome those addictions. It's very, very difficult. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to take bil asbab, to take by all possible, exhaust all means available to you. The person who goes out searching for all possible cures and means of help, that is a person who's serious about their tawbah. That is a person who's serious about change. That is a person who is passionate about developing and growing and using that mistake or that sin or that crime as a turning point. The great scholar Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi said, it is possible that the greatest of sins could be the cause for someone to be the greatest of believers. Because they use that moment as a turning point in their life. To move towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity and with passion. And Allah said in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Race to Allah. Go. Move. فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are you going to go? What earth other than Allah's earth will you go on? What food will you eat other than the food that Allah gave you? What oxygen will you breathe other than the oxygen Allah gave you? Where will you possibly go except to your grave which will lead you back to your Creator? Run from the anger of Allah to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only way to escape the punishment of Allah is to run to the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us of those who feel the value of the days of Ramadan and use it as a turning point in their life. May Allah make us of those who seek forgiveness. May Allah make us of those who conclude this month of Ramadan and it will be said to them, you are forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our shortcomings. May Allah grant us the wisdom and the intelligence and the maturity to admit our mistakes. May Allah protect us from being in a state of denial. May Allah protect us from being so ignorant and arrogant that we deny our mistakes and our shortcomings. May Allah make us of those who recite the Quran and read the stories of the Quran and contemplate and ponder and reflect upon them and apply them into our lives. Before we close, we should remember that the last 10 nights of Ramadan are approaching and they are the most special nights uh, of the month of Ramadan and of the entire year. And so it behooves us to take advantage of these nights and push ourselves as much as we possibly can. So for that we will be having extra tahajjud, extra salah in the nights of Ramadan here at the masjid. And that begins on uh, Saturday night, which is technically Sunday, because it's after midnight. So it officially begins Sunday, but that's later in the night uh, after Saturday. Uh, that begins at 2 a.m. From 2 a.m. till 3.30 and suhoor will be provided. So we don't need to worry about 
having our uh, meal in that uh, time. Uh, again, we remind everyone about the affordable Hajj package led by our uh, Sheikh Mustafa Umar from August 5 to 17. And again, we remind you about the Young Scholars Program that uh, the social community is putting on for boys and girls ages 7 to 9 uh, during uh, Friday. Um, Friday and Saturday nights during the Taraweeh. So please register your children in that age range for this program and take advantage of this and all the other programs brought to you by your, brought to you by your local masjid. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who listen and follow the best of what they hear. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala Ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله